Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today's video is going to be a brand review that has been highly requested for a while and that is Heritage by Mindy. If you're not familiar with this brand, I'm sure most of you are that clicked on this video. It's an affordable hair care brand that you can pick up at Walmart that claims to have just kind of naturally based, really good for your hair products at a very, very low cost. So I wanted to really take a fair amount of time to test out all of these products so that I could give a fair review. And I am finally ready to do just that. So I keep looking over here because I have all of the products splayed out on my desk and there are a lot. I think I have up to 10 different products here. Shampoos and conditioners, leave-ins, masks, oils, treatments, rinses. I feel like pretty much almost everything you would wanna know about from this brand. And we're gonna talk about all the products and my thoughts on each of them as far as ingredients, formulation, and just my overall experience. So if you are curious to hear my thoughts on this brand, if it's a brand that I would recommend purchasing for an affordable option, or if it's something that I am not really a huge fan of, you have come to the right spot. We're gonna jump right into that. Before we do, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, drop a comment below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for your support in doing all of those things. That really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Instagram and TikTok handle are right here. And my Lightroom preset filters for editing Instagram photos are listed in my description box below. All right, let's talk Heritage by Mindy. Okay, before we dive into products, I quickly wanted to read just a little about the brand that they have on their website so we can get a feel for what they stand for. So it says Heritage is the first hair care brand that truly encompasses the needs of every hair type and texture. A brand that is inclusive of everyone and every family, no matter your needs, you can trust in finding the best products with modern, efficacious, clean formulations that work. And then if you scroll down a little bit further on their website, they have a list of ingredients that their products are free from. So it includes things like gluten, aluminum, mineral oil, parabens, silicones, sulfates, sulfates, no, sulfates, and then they do say that their products are cruelty-free and vegan, which I love. Underneath, however, I was a little bit thrown off because it says list varies from product to product, and I noticed in preparing for this video that a lot of the products that I have, for example, do have silicone. So I thought that was kind of strange that they have this stamped on the front page of their website even though it's not something that every product actually has, if that makes sense. I think it would make more sense to include those things on the actual product description. Even though I know it says it varies, I don't know. I found that to be slightly misleading, but even still, I think a lot of you guys know that I'm just not personally a huge fan of this free from marketing or kind of clean beauty marketing. It's definitely not a knock at this brand. This is just kind of something that the industry has adopted at this point. I personally feel it makes consumers fear ingredients that don't deserve to be feared and they really don't need to be demonized. And there are certain ingredients that sure may not work great for certain hair types, but can be really beneficial for others. And that is where this kind of gets a little bit messy. So just wanted to make sure that I was saying that again, it's not just a problem of this brand, but I do love the fact that they are cruelty free and vegan, of course. All right, let's start right off with their shampoo. So this I did purchase with my own money, but before I forget, because I probably will, a lot of these products were sent to me for free in PR, but this video is not sponsored and I'm not being paid to upload this or share my opinion in any way, shape, or form. I just received free product as a gift. So I will put an asterisk in the description box below next to each product title if I was actually sent it. Anything else I purchased with my own money. This is called their Color Check Color Care Shampoo and it says it gently cleanses and prevents color washout for a longer lasting salon fresh look. This is said to work for all hair types and textures and some of the ingredient highlights include panthenol, passion fruit oil, and elderberry extract. This formulation is actually on the thicker side. It's pretty dense and it lathers up really, really nicely, which you guys know I always look out for in a shampoo because that means that I can clean the scalp as evenly as possible, as easily as possible, which I really need to make sure I'm properly cleaning my scalp when I am washing because I only wash once a week. So that was all great. It's also an opaque kind of creamier formulation and those formulations typically don't work the absolute best for my hair type because I do have an oilier scalp. And it's also just easier to get some residue with formulations like this versus a really clear shampoo. So that's not always the case because I have formulations that I absolutely love that are more opaque, but sometimes I can kind of have an issue with that. So when I first got out of the shower, my hair was fully nice and cleaned. I didn't feel that I had any buildup from this, which was great and no itchiness or discomfort whatsoever. So I think it really did gently cleanse the scalp. But the next day I felt like I had a good amount of shine that almost looked a little bit oily. So I wanna make sure that I'm showing you guys that. 
It doesn't look fully greasy, but just has a little bit of that separation that's like, uh. Not looking like I just washed my hair the day before, unfortunately, and I actually did end up applying dry shampoo just to kind of fix some of that. So I think if you have a dry scalp, you'll be obsessed with this. If you have a really oily scalp, it may not work out for you, but I still think it's a really, really great option, especially for the price point. The conditioner that I picked up is called their SOS Deep Moisture and Restore Conditioner. It says that it's going to provide deep hydration and rejuvenate the hair. This is meant for types 2B to 4C hair, so it's not meant for my hair type which is type one, but I still really wanted to try it out because of some of the claims of this. It didn't look to be too thick for my hair type and it has some really nice ingredients like safflower seed oil, marshmallow root extract, and macadamia seed oil. And I really ended up enjoying this formulation. While it's really nice and creamy, it's not too heavy or too thick. So I do really think that this would work for most hair types as well, even though it's not necessarily for type one hair. It's just not something that I felt was too much for my hair and I have fine hair strands for reference. After using this, my hair was perfectly conditioned so I really didn't have any concerns as far as it making my hair look a little bit drier than normal, really nothing like that. My hair did not look weighed down. My one minor complaint is that I felt like my hair was slightly more tangly than normal. I do just have incredibly tangly hair because of the type of hair that I have, but slightly tanglier than normal, but still nothing that was super concerning. So overall, I think it is a really, really good conditioner and is one that I would recommend. Next, we have a hair rinse called an Apple A Day ACV Hair Rinse. This is supposed to cleanse the scalp and condition the hair without stripping. This works for all hair types and has both apple cider vinegar and lactic acid to remove product buildup and gently exfoliate the scalp. And the formulation is very liquidy and runny, but it's not super so water-like to where it's really difficult to spread throughout the scalp. It does have a little bit of slip in it, but it's not an oily or greasy feeling slip, if that makes sense. So to use this, all you do is apply it after shampoo. You'll section off the hair, apply it to the scalp, massage that into the scalp, leave it in for a few seconds, and then you can go ahead and rinse and move along with the rest of your routine. And I really, really, really enjoy this product. And I think it does a great job at removing product buildup without leaving my scalp feeling stripped or dry. It doesn't cause my scalp to flake. No issues like that, just an awesome way to get an extra cleanse. The other rinse that I have is called the Rice is Right. It's the rice water hair rinse that says it's a nourishing hair treatment that boosts the overall appearance of hair. This also works for all hair types and the star ingredient of this product is rice, of course, or rice extract. And I wanted to make sure that I was talking about this because I think that this is a great way to get the benefits of rice extract without having to do the DIY rice water at home which you guys know went south for me very quickly. So I love that we have something like this and that they kind of captured that demand because this is just going to be safer overall than testing something out yourself and potentially going overboard like I did. But aside from that, this also does have a couple other forms of hydrolyzed plant-based proteins, has some nice replenishing ingredients as well, vitamin C and E and panthenol. So all in all, another nice ingredient list. And this formulation is quite a bit creamier than that apple cider vinegar rinse but you're supposed to use it in the same type of way. So after you shampoo, you will just apply this to the scalp. You can apply it to the ends of the hair, massage it in, leave it in for a few minutes, and then you can rinse it out and move right along. So something like this does a great job at adding additional shine to the hair, giving your hair some extra protection from those plant-based proteins, and then also just making the hair look softer and more manageable overall. So if you have been curious about rice water, but you haven't tried it out yet, maybe you didn't wanna go through the hassle of making it, which it definitely is a hassle, or you just wanted a safer option, this is such a great product to try out instead. Okay, let's move on to hair masks. First, I have the Masquerade Transforming Hair Mask, and this one says it's going to visibly restore and rejuvenate dehydrated and damaged hair, and it's also for all hair types. There are some really nice conditioning and nourishing ingredients in this, like argon and macadamia seed oil. It has shea butter, which is very, very rich and buttery, and this also has a plant-based protein and fruit extracts. I really love this formulation for a mask, and I do think it's something that would work for a lot of hair types because while it is thicker and creamier, it's not too buttery or waxy or too heavy. It's something that's kind of in between. So if you want something that is creamier, but it's not really going to weigh down the hair, then I think that this is a great option, but it's also not so lightweight to where you're going to feel like you need another deep conditioning mask.
mask after. So I really enjoy using this. I think it adds so much softness to the hair and it really, really gives my hair a nice deep condition that again, I am in desperate need of. So another great option that I would definitely recommend. One of my favorite affordable hair masks for sure. The other in shower mask that I have is called their Power Up Protein Treatment. This says that it will transform weak strands into healthier looking hair. This also has shea butter and some really great plant-based oils like castor oil and coconut oil and two different forms of plant-based proteins. One is baobab protein. What? And the other is quinoa protein. So while this is considered to be a protein treatment, I wouldn't say that it has an overload of proteins in it. So if you have been hesitant to use protein-based products, worried about protein buildup, I mean, don't add this if you already have a ton of other products with added proteins, but if you've been wanting to try one out, I think that this is a really great one to start off with because again, it doesn't have too much going on. And this formulation is actually very, very similar to that previous mask that we just talked about. It's just a little bit thicker and a little bit creamier. So if you wanted something that was one step further, this will be the one for you. But for use of this, they actually recommend leaving it in the hair for just five to 10 minutes before rinsing. So I personally like to use hair masks before shampooing, but something like this you could use after shampoo and then just leave it in for those few minutes before rinsing. So while I personally do not have a need at this point in my life for protein treatments, I'm trying to ease back in baby steps after the protein buildup that I had. Even though I don't have a need for a product like this right now, I do think that it's a great option for those of you that do. Proteins are just going to help to strengthen the hair and protect the hair from future damage. They do a lot of amazing things. I will list some videos below where I talk about the benefits of protein. Of course, you wanna make sure that you're not overdoing it so that you don't get built up, but again, a good one. All right, moving on to post shower products. Let's talk about the light as a feather leave in conditioner. This says it will restore, soften and detangle the hair while fighting frizz. This works for all hair types and primarily has hydrating ingredients as some of those ingredient highlights like glycerin and xylitol, which is a sugar molecule, but it also has a really awesome modified silicone in it called amodimethicone, which will help to condition and protect the hair. This formulation is so lightweight. It almost feels like you're just spraying water on the hair like that was the first thing I thought of and when I think about the other leave-in conditioners that I have and love it definitely is just not quite as conditioning as those and just not overall as conditioning and detangling as I need it to be for my hair type personally after I used this I still had to go in with another leave-in conditioner on top of it because my hair was just not detangling Again, keep in mind, I have very tangly hair. So I would say if you do have tangly hair, maybe one that you wanna skip, but if you don't deal with tangles and you want a leave-in that is super, super lightweight, this is a really great option for you. Then we have the Play It Cool Heat Protectant Spray. This says it conditions and hydrates while protecting against heat. Again, works for all hair types. Not a ton going on for ingredient highlights in this product either. It also has glycerin, but it does have argan oil in it, which I do think gave it just a little bit more slip, even though it doesn't feel like an oily product. So it's still super lightweight, but I do think it did a better job at detangling my hair, even though this is not intended to be a detangling product. I mean, it says it conditions, but for me, I'm just so used to using leave-in sprays that are kind of all-in-one sprays. They're heat protectants, they detangle, they condition, they do all of that. So I just don't personally love using a ton of separate products. I'd rather do it all in one. But if you are looking to add a heat protectant to your routine, then I think that this is a really nice one to use because it does not leave any weird sticky residue in the hair. And again, it's just very, very lightweight. So similar story kind of as that lightweight leave-in conditioner. If you have tangly hair and you are hoping to use this as a detangling spray, probably not gonna be for you, but again, as an additional step, I think it's good. Next, we have their Strength Training Leave-In Conditioner Pudding. It says it's a pre-styler leave-in treatment that conditions the hair. This is meant for types 3A to 4C hair, so really not designed for my hair type, but the ingredients made me intrigued. It has some great plant-based oils, like coconut oil and meadow foam seed oil, amongst others, good conditioning ingredients like shea butter, and it does have a plant-based protein in it. This is a very creamy formulation that's definitely on the thicker end for a leave-in conditioner, so for those that do have coarser, curly, to coily hair that works great and is not going to weigh down the hair but if you do have fine hair strands like me just use a little bit less product than you may be used to and for me personally i end up loving it in that way does a great job of conditioning makes my hair feel so so soft i really do enjoy it so i actually find that this works really well with these sprays so if i use one of these sprays first then apply this then go in and try to detangle that does what i needed these products to do so if you are looking for 
something from this range and you have a similar hair type to me, that is what I would recommend doing. Pick up one of these, add this on top, that's great for detangling. Second to last, we have the end play split end rescue. This says it improves the appearance of split ends for a fresh cut look. Some of the nice oils in this include coconut oil, babassu seed oil, and jojoba seed oil. And then the form of protein in this is hydrolyzed jojoba protein. And that is what is going to help to temporarily seal those split ends and why this is called split end rescue. So proteins do help to do that again, temporarily. And even though this is kind of a split end treatment, you would really just use this in the same way that you would any other leave-in conditioner. So on damp hair after washing, no special rhyme or reason to that. And this formulation compared to that leave-in pudding is definitely lighter weight. So I would say that this is more of a lotion, whereas that one is more of a cream formulation. So even though these are not identical formulations, I feel like they're the same exact type of product. One is just going to be better suited for fine to normal hair strands, whereas the other will be better suited for medium to coarse hair strands because it's a little bit thicker because they both have conditioning oils. They both just have one plant-based protein. So it's not like this is packed with a ton of proteins to help with split ends. Really, really similar things here. Just depends on the formulation that you want to use. So this does work better for my hair type. I do really enjoy this as well, but I feel like you can't go wrong with either. And the very last product that I have from Heritage is called the Take Your Vitamins Argon Oil. It says it's a non-greasy oil that repairs, strengthens, and adds shine. And it also works for all hair types. I know that what they name their products is none of my business, but I do wish that they would name this something other than Argon Oil because I feel like, I mean, you can look at the ingredients, of course, and see that there's other ingredients in this but it is slightly misleading because it's definitely not pure argon oil and in front of argon oil and the label are actually different forms of silicone silicones are excellent conditioning ingredients so I'm not complaining about that and honestly I wouldn't want this to be a pure argon oil anyway because that is a very heavy almost sticky kind of greasy oil that I personally only use on my hair the night before I shampoo so that I can rinse it out immediately. It's not a leave-in oil that I would ever use. So I don't have problem with that. I actually really, really enjoy this, but I was like, hmm, but it's not just argon oil. I don't know, whatever, semantics. So other than the silicones, this also has avocado oil in it. And this is arguably, oh, is it my favorite? I would say it's within my top three favorites out of all of these products I have been loving this. It is such a nice lightweight oil. It adds great shine. It's not greasy. It doesn't weigh down my hair. So I love to use this after styling my hair to just really help to tame the, you know, sometimes after you heat style, the ends go a little crazy help to tame those ends and just give my hair a really pretty glossy look. I also love to use this midweek to add some extra shine back to my hair because again, my ends are looking frazzled at that point. So amazing product, a little bit misleading as far as the title, but other than that, I would 100% recommend this. This is for sure my favorite affordable hair oil right now. I thought we were gonna have an even 10, but that ended up being 11 different products that I had from Heritage by Mindy and my thoughts on all of them. So overall, do I think that this is a good brand? Absolutely. Would I recommend it for an affordable option that you can easily pick up at the store? 100%. I think this is definitely one of the best affordable hair care brands that I have ever tried. So I would highly recommend it if you are looking for a lower price point option. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this video and on these products in the comments below. Let me know if you've tried anything from this brand, which products are your favorite, which ones didn't quite work out for you. If you're going to pick up anything after watching this video, I will make sure to list everything in my description box below and let me know, of course, what you're picking up. Again, if you enjoyed this video, you guys know the drill. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, drop a comment below, subscribe to my channel and send my channel to a friend. Thank you so much for doing all of those things. Stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few days, but until then, I hope you have a great few days.